ओके टुडे वी आर हियर टू लर्न दी मॉड्यूलेशन विच इज फ्रीक्वेंसी मॉड्यूलेशन एंड डी मॉड्यूलेशन यूजिंग एन आई सी दैट इज एक्स आर टू टू जीरो सिक्स विच इज अ मॉड्यूलेटर आई सी इट्स एन आई सी विच इज यूज एज एक्स आर और एक्स आर स्टैंड फॉर ट्रांसमीटर एंड रिसीवर सो वी कॉल इट एज ए ट्रांस रिसीवर आई सी इट कैन बी यूज एज द मॉड्यूलेटर एज वेल एज दी मॉड्यूलेटर amplifier is provided which is an audio amplifier we can say it as an audio oscillator which is generating frequency from uh, 300 hertz to 3.4 kilohertz as we can say the audio data is frequency is 3.4 kilohertz we can actually vary it to uh, 15 kilohertz for fm that is maximum modulating frequency which can be used for fm modulation is 15 kilohertz but here it is used up to 3.4 kilohertz amplitude variation is 0 to 10 kilohertz 10 volt sorry uh, what we have is there are two other modulator one is a reactance modulator the other is a variactive modulator and the third one that is we are going to perform using that is xr2206 now the internal carrier generator using xr2206 varies from frequency 10 kilohertz to 200 kilohertz so it's a carrier frequency that is maximum 200 kilohertz which we can vary there are knobs which are provided which you can vary for amplitude variation and for frequency variation minimum to max now uh, the concept for frequency modulation as you are aware that is as the amplitude of modulating signal changes the frequency of the carrier is changing and the amplitude remains constant the reverse is for as you are aware for amplitude modulation that is amplitude changes but the frequency remains constant so here amplitude remains constant and frequency is nothing but varied by now what are the connections which we are going to start with is it's we are going to directly apply the amplitude that is we are going to see the audio amplifier output so i have just connected the cro probe to the audio oscillator now we'll observe the waveform on the cro and that is your audio Uh, output which is channel 1 which we have represented here you can directly measure the frequency and the amplitude by measuring the uh, uh, switch which is the measure switch from the measure switch you just select the channel whichever you want to select it like for example the source now here is channel 1 now in type you can select the amplitude or the frequency or the phase for which you are going to change by so here it is nothing but the frequency the frequency is now 2.6 kilohertz uh the amplitude that is peak to peak amplitude is nothing but 1.16 or 18 volts uh, volts it say right so this is your basic baseband signal that is a modulating signal the second connection which we are going to go for is the uh, xr2206 connection uh, which is uh the modulator ic which we are going to go for now here there is a switch which has been provided to select the modulator the first switch is for reactance modulator the second selection is for variated diode and the third is nothing but for the xr2206 now what is the principle working for xr2206 is it is something having a switch inside where uh with high peak you have high frequency with low peak you have low frequency so let us first observe the fm output and what we have connected is the fm output which is at this particular point of xr2206 now let us observe the uh, output for fm modulated wave now what you can see is the fm variation is there but not much variation is observed in the Uh, that is the modulated signal now we'll just vary the amplitude of modulating and see the variation in the fm modulated output so i'm changing the amplitude of modulating signal so as we change the amplitude of modulating signal you can observe here is the variation which is seen in the frequency so as amplitude is high there is more variations which can be observed for for example uh, let's uh, make the waveform stop and you can see that the variation for higher peak is low frequency and for the lower peak it is high frequency so by default actually uh, when we study fm modulation as a concept what we study is at the higher peak you have higher amplitude and at the lower peak you have lower uh, lower frequency 
but here the reverse can be also done that is for higher amplitude you can have low frequency and for low amplitude we can also have high frequency component so you can see the major that is the variation which can be observed for the fm modulated output so once again we'll just see the variation will vary and what you can see is for higher peak you have low frequency component for the low peak you have here the high frequency component but as once again as we have we do study it is the reverse when we go through the concepts of fm modulation right now coming to the demodulator or before going to the demodulator we need to measure the frequency component of high and low frequency so once again i'll just a bit vary the variation because as you can see at the higher peak you have uh, the low so at the higher peak you have just two to three cycle only single cycle so it's difficult to measure the frequency and hence we'll vary the frequency first and then we'll measure the uh, that is number of cycles which are there so how to vary the frequency of fm that is vary the amplitude so i'm increasing a bit the amplitude what you can see is there is a change in the frequency component and uh, we can see that there are some frequency components okay still not much variation we'll again change the amplitude of the yes now what you can see is there are some changes in the frequency component so here you can measure the variations just a minute once again we'll vary the yeah so here you can see that there are now two components or two cycles which can be seen for the higher so you have higher amplitude you have two cycles low frequency cycles for lower amplitude you have two that is the high frequency cycles once again measuring is measure and you go by now the cursor that is option so once i'll click the measure after that you click on the cursor option come to your cro here you you have is again the source which you have to select with the source you have now the frequency which you are selecting for so you have time then it's nothing but sorry you have to select the time in that you select now the cursor so place the cursor at one peak and the second cursor at the second peak so what you can see is one frequency component that is delta difference which you have to observe approximately the delta difference which shows is nothing but 10 point or it's 10 kilohertz is the delta difference now that is for the high frequency component let's measure the low frequency component so again one peak at the fm modulated low frequency part the second cursor will move the second cursor will move to the second peak and again the delta difference which we observe is somewhere 7.4 kilohertz so you can see there is some difference that is a delta difference between the two frequency components which can be observed so this is how you measure the fm minimum and the f max minimum this is not the exact actually the technical process for measuring the uh, minimum and the maximum frequency there has to be an amplitude variation which has to be measured and according to that we actually measure the fm but this is the most easiest method or uh, we'll say understandable method which can be measured for fm minimum and f max minimum now coming to the reconstruction side what you have in the reconstruction side is again we have an ic which was a pll ic which we call it as lm565 is a pll ic which is used for reconstruction now what is the concept of pll ic is the pll has a uh, three basic blocks first is the phase comparator the second is the low pass filter and the third one is nothing but the uh, that is the uh, we we'll, we do call it as a we'll say a low pass filter and it's a vco which has been there other 
instead of an amplifier you can mm -hmm. say a vco so what is being uh, connected to the input of fm uh, that is a phase detector is that is ic is the one input is nothing but your fm signal one input is your fm signal the second is nothing but some reference which has to be adjusted what is this reference we are adjusting this reference is nothing but called as the free running frequency which we adjusted to adjust it as the carrier frequency so whatever your carrier frequency which you have set from this particular ic that is xr2206 you have to use the same carrier frequency there now how to measure this carrier frequency if what you can say is i want to measure the carrier over here so instead you turn off that is the analog output or what you can do is the easiest method is at the input of this particular xr2206 you can directly measure the carrier component which can be that is the carrier of it now you have to adjust for pll that carrier frequency and then that passes through the low pass filter the low pass filter will compare the carrier the high frequency component example the carrier here now is 12 kilohertz our high frequency component was 10 kilohertz when there is a comparison it is a positive output which has been produced instead of positive we'll say a higher we'll say a logic one has been produced and when it compares the uh, carrier frequency with the low frequency component that is 7.5 kilohertz then it produces a low frequency component it is passed through the vco the vco is going to adjust as per the that is the it's called as a voltage controlled oscillator so the oscillations will be produced as per the amplitude so what is the amplitude it's directly logic 1 or logic 0 so as per logic 1 and logic 0 the vco is going to adjust it to the fm frequency now the pll works in three stages first stage is comparison which is first stage is the free running stage that is you are adjusting the carrier frequency to uh, sorry adjusting the uh, free running frequency to carrier the second is called as a capture mode where the variation between the carrier and the uh, that is uh, the input frequency is made and then the vco is going to adjust itself to the fm frequency which is going to be locked to the original frequency component this is the working of whom that is the pllic this is the internal block schematic of whom that is pll now let's come to the practical aspect this is your pll which is internally having phase comparator low pass filter and a vco now this is again passed through a low pass filter right so what we'll see is directly the low pass filter output and the uh, that is the vco if you observe the vco it's going to be a rectangular waveform which can be seen by so we verify that is the rectangular output at the vco pass that output through the low pass filter and this is your detected signal back again that is the original signal back again at the receiver end so if you see here now what you can see here is the original and the detected are not same correct why because the difference between the two component has to be minimum so that the original and the detected signal will be same so how to adjust now this particular that is the original and the detected signal now what you can see is both the signals together on the CRO the process for it is that is the free running frequency has exactly to be adjusted to carrier if this is not adjusted then it is difficult to detect the signal back again so what I'll be doing is I'll be now adjusting the VCO in such a way that both the signals will be with the exactly same frequency so I adjust the different now in such a way that both the frequency components are same so what you can see is see you have the frequency of both the channels that is the original and the detected is one and the same though there is a distortion in the reconstructed output maybe amplitude variation but the frequency has to remain the same so this is the detected signal back again at the receiver end and that is the original signal which has been transmitted from the transmitter end so what you have to see is to get the reconstructed output back again the difference between f max and f minimum should be minimum so as i have adjusted to be the to, to minimum once again if you want to observe it we can see the fm output with minimum frequency difference 
over here so what you can see is the difference between fm wave that is f minimum and f max is nothing but minimum there is a variation which can be seen but the variation is too much less that is the difference is too much less and this is your fm output which can be observed by right so this is your fm modulation and the measurements for the fm modulation